Hey, what's up, folks? So, I finally gotten back to my LD Moss project. Um, I left this kind of on the back burner for quite a while because I've got lots of other stuff I wanted to work on, and honestly, I was a little discouraged from blowing up these $250 chips. So, um, when I first built this, um, I slapped a chip in there, and basically, I copied the NXP reference palette as far as the output circuit goes. So on this one, the input circuit is a little bit different from the NXP reference palette, mainly in that um, the whole bias circuit is all through-hole components instead of being surface mount components. Um, it's basically the same getup, it's just through-hole instead of surface mount. And uh, there's a little some minor changes here in the input network just for a better tune. Um, so the NXP palette runs without feedback, and it runs really well without feedback. Like no feedback resistors, no this capacitor, that resistor on either side, it's not there. And it runs really well like that. It runs shockingly well for having no feedback. So um, basically, like I said, I, I kind of copied everything, you know, same capacitor, same, same, same get up as, as, as far as I could get it in the output circuit. And um, I plugged the pill in there, started ramping it up and playing with it. And, and all of a sudden it just caught an oscillation and drew too much current and pop, you know, pop goes the weasel. So I got a little discouraged after that and uh, I decided just to play with some other projects. You know, This is expensive man, I'm not rich, I can't afford to just sit here and pop these things all day. So anyway, I'm back to it. I've made a couple changes since the last thing. I didn't, I didn't copy the output circuit exactly this time and I definitely didn't do it last time. So this time I've got a mica, um, a metal metal mica capacitor, right there across the drains, and I think that's what caused my issue last time. Why it uh, why it popped the, why it popped the chip is instead of having that metal mica, I had one of these, and the resonance is different between these those, and the NXP palette comes with an ATC chip capacitor, but that ATC chip capacitor is unobtainium. And it's also a $30 capacitor. You know, it's a little, little tiny little sucker, but it's rated for, you know, a, a gigawatt. And it's, it, yeah, yeah, it's some super high-tech ceramic capacitor. So I found these. Um, same value. It's just metal clad or metal metal mica instead of being an ATC ceramic. Um, I've got the ATC ceramics on the output tune right there. Just those little two. Those weren't, those weren't super expensive. Um, but I'm going to run this here in a second. I've already run it. Let me, sh let me show you what I'm doing right now. Okay. So that's 5 kilowatt slug. It would help if I turned on the bias circuit. There we go. Alright, so that's my carrier. 400 watts. It's going to peak. Audio. So as you can see, it's hitting, hitting the 1200 mark, 1100, 1200, and I'm barely driving it, barely driving it. I've got 8 dBs of attenuation, and my carrier is probably 1 watt, so it's like, it's a ridiculously low amount of power going into this board. But um, I'm going to drive it a little bit harder and see if I can push it like the NXP reference palette. I can get that one up to, oh, I don't know, 1800 PEP. Um, before it just kind of, you know, compression is just, it's done. It's saturated. You can't get any more out of it. So I'm going to set this camera up. I need to recharge my phone so it doesn't die. But I'm going to set it up over here. And just in case something blows up. Because I want to catch it on video. <laughs> I, I know this, that, I know something's going to blow up eventually. And my goal is just to catch it on video so you can enjoy the fireworks. Um, but anyway, on with the show. Alright, I tried to get a good view. But, you know, I'm working with a cell phone here, so give, give me a break. Give, give me a break. But uh, I'm going to fire this thing up, and I'm going to see what I can push it to. I'm going to make this meter swing as far as it'll swing, and, uh, and uh, Bob's your uncle. Whatever happens, happens. All right. Uh, 
Alright, so I'm going to start with my 400 watt dead key. Audio! I still got that 1100. Too bad. She's already smoking. That's my current draw. Keeping it under 20 amps, alright. Audio. Audio. 1700. That's a milestone right there. Audio. Well, hasn't blown up yet. So that's nice. Kinda wanna see if I can get it up to 1800. Dummy loads get a little warm. All right, screw it. I'm gonna shoot for 18 hundo. After that, I'm gonna stop. I'm not gonna push it any harder if I get it there. Audio. That's that's actually about 1800. Audio. Yep, yeah, that's that's 18 hundo. Five kilowatt slug. Let's start with our carrier. Four hundo. Audio. Eighteen hundo, baby. And it didn't blow up. I'm happy and sad all at the same time because I, I really wish I caught the last one on video, but I'm also really glad that I didn't just pop two hundred fifty bucks. <laughs> you know that's nice but uh man i'm stoked it works it works that's what happens when you copy a design from a major corporation that 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 gives you a, a product that's there to be copied basically you know at nxp they make these reference palettes and they're there so that you can take a hint and say and, you, and learn from it you know so they they don't uh, they don't make reference palettes because it's fun. They make it so that you can copy their design and buy more chips. You know what I mean? Because they don't sell ferrites. They don't sell capacitors and shit. They sell LD MOS chips. So if you have a design that works that you can just drop their chip in, they want you to buy more chips. And uh, let's look at the current draw on that. So eighteen. Adio. Is that about 19 amps at 63 volts so this is running at 63 I could put two more volts into it and maybe get another watt or two out of it but uh, yeah 63 volts MRFX 1k 80 H and I'm stoked I'm stoked but yeah, actually the harmonics look pretty good um, let's take a look at the harmonics here so that's not perfect but it doesn't get any worse when you key it up. So that's that's a big, big plus in my book. Let's see what it actually, let's see if I can, eh, I'm not gonna set up the spectrum analyzer. It takes too many button pushes. Um, but that's, that's really decent. So if I were to combine two of these, and then if I were to put a low pass L network, that would, that would filter that out to be well within reason. I'm stoked. That's awesome. I've I've wanted this for so long, for so long, to build my own LD MOS amp and it work. And I mean everything here. I put everything here. I copied the NXP design, but fucking sue me. That's why they built it so you can copy it. But I built everything here. Transformers even got my name on it. Should have put it on the board, but I'm not good at editing Gerber files, so I wasn't it. I wanted to wanted to put it in the uh, in the metal here but uh, I gotta learn more about Gerber files to do that um, 
I think my phone's about to die, but I want to show you a couple things. So, let me grab some stuff. All right. So, this is the heat spreader that's underneath that board. So, I machined that all myself. I got I got access to a CNC machine. Um, so, like I said, this is based off of the NXP palette, which has a temperature compensating bias circuit. So, what they did is they... The PC board that they used is like Teflon impregnated and it, it conducts heat really well. So um, whatever temperature the heat spreader is, the board is going to be about that same temperature. So they just put the transistor right on the board and the heat conducts through the board to the, to the compensating transistor. I, I don't have that technology. So what I did is I put the transistor on the underside of the board and I put a little heat sink compound right here so that it would be in good thermal contact with the heat spreader and I've checked it a few times and it holds bias current within a within you know 50 milliamps from from ice cold to pretty freaking hot so you know whatever they did with their bias circuit design it's it's on point and uh, I copied that so this one's following it right along um, first thing that comes to mind on this amp is I, I want more feedback I want to see if I can improve the linearity. Um, putting a little more power into it wouldn't hurt my feelings at all. Because right now it's like a 1 watt carrier going through 8 dBs of attenuation. And um, <laughs> that's like, it's very little. It's very little. It's, it's 0 0.1, 0 0.2 watts or something. It's, it's, it's a tiny amount of carrier to get 4 hundo out. So I think by adding a little more feedback, I can bring that, 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 uh, that lower end up and the top end down. So I think I can linearize the curve a little bit. But anyway, I'm just stoked that this thing is working. Super stoked. Super stoked. Super happy. Um, this is, I feel like this is one of the biggest successes I've had since I started getting into radio. Um, so yeah, I'm happy. Uh, I'm going to keep tinkering with this thing. Hopefully if it blows up, I catch it on video. And, uh, yeah, until next time, Mud Duck Sharky, and I'm back out.